So, Lord, and we just want to say thank you, Father. And so, Father God, as we uh, get into our lesson tonight, we just ask you to bless everyone that uh, is viewing and everyone that will be this lesson. This we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, amen and God. And so we're getting into our lesson tonight, and it comes from Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to go over two verses, and uh, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. And I have the King James Version, but whatever version you have, read along with us. And it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Amen. And we a key verse tonight is Acts, comes from um, the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and it reads, Ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. And so let's read our lesson that's on your monitor right now, and it reads, As a believer, you are powerless apart from the presence of the living God through the Holy Spirit within you. At his ascension, Jesus told his followers, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remote parts of the earth. Acts 1 and 8, New American Standard Bible. It takes power to live the Christian life. God's power in us gives us the strength uh, to victoriously face difficulties and challenges. It equips us with the same energy that Jesus had in his ministry. When, excuse me, why then do we sometimes act and feel like failure? John, the apostle wrote, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. First John 4 and 4. When ye yield to temptation, we feel defeated. Sin blocks the power of God in the life of a believer. We grieve his spirit without disobedience, and in doing so, become powerless in the eyes of the man. We are not strong enough within ourselves to say no temptation. The power of God keeps us and protects us. Sin and a lukewarm heart toward God leave you vulnerable to enemy attack. Stay in Jerusalem, was Christ's command, until you have received power from our heart. Clear instructions for living the spirit-filled life. Stay close to Jesus, your greatest source of power and spiritual strength. And then all together at the bottom, God filled me with the power of your spirit and do me with your divine strength. Amen. And so the name of this lesson is the power of the spirit. And who is that spirit? Oh, he is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> if we look at John 14 verses 16 and 17, Let's see, uh, John, yeah, say John, John 14, excuse me, I'm sorry, I lost the uh, John, the 14th chapter, the 16th verse and the 17th verse, it says, I will pray your Father, and he shall give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know, but he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Don't miss that. He shall be in you. Don't meet, don't miss that. He dwells with, with you, and he is in you. 
And then John, the 16th chapter, oh, then the 26th verse of John 14 and 26 verse, excuse me. He says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then in John, the 16th chapter, uh, the seventh verse, down to the 13th, but I'm seventh and the 13th verse, excuse me. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient that uh, that I go away. For if I go not away, the confidence will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The 13th verse, and the 16th chapter and the 13th verse says, How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you things to come. Uh, and then in John the 15th chapter and the 26th verse, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then I'm going to read this 27 verse there. And ye shall also bear with me. You shall also bear with me, because you have been with me from the beginning. Amen. And so here we have the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper, the uh, Spirit of Truth. All of those names that he's called in the Bible. Uh, and we need to know that we can do nothing. We're powerless. If we gleam over this lesson, the power of the Spirit. It says, as a believer, you are powerless apart from the presence of, the, of God living, God living through the Holy Spirit within you. And I told you that. Uh, in verse chapter 14, verse 16, that uh, six, I mean 17, excuse me, that he dwells within you and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit has, is in you already. We didn't have to wait like they had to wait in the old, uh, in the New Testament here when the disciples had to wait upon the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit already dwelled in us, and we need to thank Jesus right now. He says in verse 18 of the 14th chapter, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. He's letting us know that we have, he's going to come to us. And so we are dwelling the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the power of God. And the Holy Spirit has that power. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be my witness, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even unto the remote, remotest part of the earth. And that's in Acts 1 8. It says, It takes power to live a Christian life. And that is so true. Christian life, everybody thinks, Oh, once I come to Christ, it's easy, easy. I got, I got all the blessings. I'm going to be. I got everything going to be all right now. And it is. Everything is all right. You give your life to Christ. You're not part of the walking dead anymore. You're part of those who will live and live eternity for eternity with our Lord and Savior. So uh, <clears throat> you have this power of God dwelling you, of uh, the Holy Spirit, and <clears throat> you've been sealed. Because it says in Ephesians um, 1 and 13 that you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, after you received the gospel of, of, of our self, the gospel of your, our salvation, which was Christ. You heard the word and believed. Uh, and if God gives God's power in us, gives us the strength to uh, victoriously face difficulties and challenges. You get that? Now, you think that uh, everything is going to be all right, but it already told you when you read in Galatians 
of 16, I mean, 5, 16, and 17, that uh, we walk in the spirit, that we are to walk in power rights, that then I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, I always like to tell people, the flesh loves this world. The flesh loves everything that goes on about this world. And the spirit does not. And so as you're bowing, as the Holy Spirit within within you, you are bowing, you're having conflicts with yourself. You're probably thinking, well, why am I having so many problems? Well, you're just having conflicts with yourself. That's all it is. You're having the, the, the flesh is trying to tell you, you got somebody in one ear telling you something, and you got the Holy Spirit in another ear going, don't do that. And that's what you have to understand. Those cartoons were true when we were looking at them when we were When you would see the ghost, of, I mean, the devil on one side and the angel on the other side. They were trying to depict exactly what this is talking about. They were giving us a, ver a, a visual display of what, what, uh, what was going on. You have that conflict within yourself. And so that's why we are to be led uh, of the spirit because you are not under law. Um, and so we... Uh, we are children of God, and it's not easy. Like you said, Paul, I will the writer here says, it takes, uh, it takes power to live the Christian life. And you don't have that power outside of God. You can't do it on your own. You're just a little people, so don't even think you can. Because you just get beat up and kicked around like the old can. And we all say kick the can before. And you just get kicked around as if... Uh, there's not going to be a care in the world. So they'll be kicking you around and kicking you to the ground. It says in here, it equips us with the same energy that Jesus had in his ministry. We are equipped. Why? Because in Ephesians 3 and 20, it says that uh, God is able to do. Okay. God is able to do. Unto, now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. But there is a power according to the power that worketh in us. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God that dwells within you, that's working within you uh, to bring out that new man that is within, within you. And that's the true holiness. That is the righteousness of God. It's in you. And you have to uh, allow the Spirit to have his way. And I know that's not easy to do. Because your flesh, like I say, loves the world. So there's a war going on within you right now. You may not even know it, but I'm, all, I'm here to let you know why you're going through difficult times. And, and so a lot of times we are, oh my God, let that happen. Because it ain't that God is letting it happen. It's that that's part of the whole process of, of becoming born again. You live, you give your life to Christ, but there is work to be done, brothers and sisters. There is work, there is growth. That you got to grow through some hurtful things when you're growing up. There's some there's some things that you have to do when you grow up. You go from adolescent to uh teenagers, from teenager, oh God, when you get there, my Lord, your hormones are firing off like firecrackers and, and the fourth of July, and you don't know if it's coming or going, and you just all you just see is a firework, boom, boom, boom. And you don't know what's going on. You think you do, but you don't. And then you get into to those upper teens, and now you're, I can't say what I want to say, but you're, you're feeling yourself, and you're smelling yourself, and you're thinking that, you know, uh, you know everything, and you don't really know everything, you know. We, 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 come, we come this far by faith, and we need to continue to walk with God, and you got to trust in God. But he's given us that power, you know. There's a power that is working in us. And we need to understand that we 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 have, we have that power. Um, let's see. In Romans eight, Romans eight. Hold on, let me get myself together. Is it Romans eight and twenty six. Oh yeah, uh, Romans eight twenty six and twenty seven says likewise. The Spirit also helps us in our infirmities, but we know not what we should. Pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself makes its intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And then it says in verse 27, and he that searches the heart 
Notice what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes his intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And so, you know, there's a weakness of our flesh that, you know, the Spirit is always willing, but the flesh is weak. And we have to let that Spirit dominate the flesh. And that's hard to do for some of us because we love what we do. The flesh loves, the flesh loves hanging out with the dog. The flesh loves uh, going to the bars. The flesh loves going into darkness. And, uh, but that light that shines bright in all of us. Uh, so we are not to walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so God is <clears throat> letting us know here, Paul lets us know that uh, we are to walk after the spirit and to uh, not let that flesh well up in us. Because it will, it will catch you at the most uh, opportune time. We need to be spiritually minded uh, and not carnal minded, you know, because carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we want to have that life and peace in our life. We want to have peace. Um, and you got to understand that the carnal mind is an enemy against God. God. And so we need to understand we don't need to be an enemy because we're not an enemy of God. But when you go back to that fleshly way, you are becoming an enemy. Uh, and you need, don't need to have that uh, femininity to be uh, against God because you won't be an enemy. You don't lose. Um, and it says, says here, that's why then. I'm getting ahead of myself. It says, why then do we sometimes act and feel like God? John, John the Apostle wrote, greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. First John 4, 4. It's because of the flesh. That's why. When you're walking in the spirit, I'm sorry. When you're walking in the spirit, you sometimes um, Forget that you have the power, you know, when you walk in the spirit, you know that you have the power, but when you walk in the flesh, you forget that uh, you have the power that is within you. Uh, God has given you that power to overcome those things that draw you back. And if you're not strong enough, please don't go to those areas that, uh, and don't do those things that uh, will make you tempt, because you will be tempted in this world. He says, when we yield to temptation, we feel defeated. That's right. Because we know that, oh, Lord, we've sinned. And you know it right off the bat because the Holy Spirit convicts you of that sin. And you need to ask for forgiveness right there and there, whatever you're doing. And, and it says here, I love this part, sin blocks the power of God in the life of a believer. Did you see that? Sin blocks the power of God and the life of a believer. Why? Because you're leaning on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all your ways and let him direct your path. And so we need to understand that we're not to lean into our own understanding because we, we're limited in our understanding. And so we are going to be tempted more and more. The devil is going to tempt you more and more. As long as you're hanging out with him, he's not going to tempt you because he's got you. Um, it says here, we grieve his spirit without disobedience and in doing so because, in doing so, excuse me, because powerless in the eyes of the enemy. We grieve his spirit with our disobedience. But then, but then dis disobedient then. God be obedient to the word of God. You know? It's, I know it's hard. I know what I'm saying. It, it sounds difficult. But it's not when you're trusting in the Lord. It's not when you're saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for leading. How often do you thank God at the end of your day for just bringing you with that? How often do you just thank God for letting you do a week? How often and how often do you even thank him for bringing you to a month or bringing you to a situation or helping you out when you thought you did it on your own? 
how are we rethinking? We should think in immediately. Right after you get to that situation, after you get to that trial, you need to be saying, thank you, Lord. And is that hard to do? No, it's not. But you have to be spiritually minded about it. You know? You got to understand that you've asked the Holy Spirit of God to help you with something. And don't think you do it on your own, but because you just asked the Holy Spirit to help you, he's helped you, and then you want to just pump up yourself. But I'm going to just say, quit pumping up the volume on yourself because it wasn't you. God, okay? Don't forget that. And so he says, we are not strong enough within ourselves to say no to temptation. Amen. That's what I'm going to say. The power of God keeps us and protects us. Thank you, Lord. That's all I'm gonna say. Sin and lukewarm heart, uh, and lukewarm heart toward God leaves you vulnerable to enemy attack. That is so true. Why do you want to be lukewarm? Don't you know that enemy is gonna attack you? It tells you here, sin and a lukewarm heart. That means you might want to get in the shower and get a little hot water on you. You could body up a little bit more so if you have a warm heart. And don't be lukewarm toward God and thanking him for the hot water, thanking him for that clean water, thanking you for that soap to cleanse you, you know, and all the other things, and thank him for the blood that really washes you with your sin. And you need to be prayed up in other words. So that you know you're not vulnerable to the attack. Because the devil ain't gonna stop. You know, I'm sorry. Something is just itching my nose. Uh, and it's just bothering me. And um you need to be prayed up and know that he's not going to stop his attack on you. you he's going to attack you even in your sleep. The devil will attack you. He'll try to kill you in your sleep. And I know that he's tried that with me a couple of times, but I, I know you call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he woke me up and he got that bill out of there because he's messing with your mind all the time. He's constantly messing with you. And, and you got to understand. It says, Christ told them, stay in Jerusalem, was Christ's commandment. You know what he's telling us today? Stay close to me, okay? Stay close with me. Uh, that is your great source of spiritual power. Because it says here, clear instruction for living the spirit-filled life means to stay close to Jesus. And you need to stay close to him uh, that greatest source and that strength, the strength of you have no strength other than him. You. you may think you are, but you are wicked. Wickedly weak. And so, don't think that you are. And some of us, you know, some of us are spiritually stronger than others. And so we need to, but we don't always maintain it. And so, uh, it says here, such, are, such as are led by the Spirit are Spiritual, but of course, spirituality is not a fixed or an absolute condition. It admits of growth, indeed, growth in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is evidence of true spirituality. That's First Peter um, three and seven. Yeah, let me make sure I got that. I don't want to say that wrong. I know it's first. No, that's, excuse me, Second Peter. Sorry, Second Peter 3 and 18. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. We need to grow in this. We need to grow and let that spirit of God, because Jesus told them when they were speaking in the garden of this vicinity that the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing and I'm here to tell you that is a truism your flesh is so weak but your spirit is always willing to get you moving and so we need to continue to lean on Jesus lean on the Holy Spirit of truth lean on God it's the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells you. And we need to know that you are 
already indwelled with that. And so don't ever feel that you don't have the power because you do. And so that's all I have to say. There's more to this because um, oh, what was that scripture? Uh, the, hold on, one more scripture I want to go over. Because we are made in Christ. And so as we are growing in the power of God and in the spirituality um, Um, I don't know. And um, so we ought to grow in the spirit here. We ought to let it lead us and guide us. Um, and so some of us are still babes wanting to take milk and being fed by milk, and that's okay. But you need to grow in the spirit. Let that Holy Spirit lead and guide and getting to know who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit was sent here by God, Jesus Himself, just to lead us in God, this guys, to teach us and, and to show us uh, the way. Because Jesus is the way. And so I'm going to leave it right there. And I'm going to close out with a prayer. And I hope you get something out of that. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. We even die each and every one. Say that. How many Father wants to every one? Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit and what all the Spirit does. Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the thing you are, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in the way we go. Father God, we're just asking for uh, you to help us to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, Lord, because we know that the flesh. Well, it's, it's a war going on with him. So it's conflict with him. And the flesh does not like the spirit. And the spirit sure don't like the flesh. And so, Father God, help us, Lord, to be obedient to your calling, be obedient to your will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. And we'll see you again on another fire Bible study. Thank you, Jesus.